Greetings, friends, as we gather together today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, as Fayette Presbyterian Church, as sisters and brothers in Christ, I am glad that you have joined us wherever you are this day. Uh, today, we are doing a sofa sanctuary because we anticipated uh, partly that the weather was not going to be very uh, good this week, and partly also because uh, Jake is under quarantine uh, right now. That is a sign of the times, I'm afraid. Um, so please keep their family in your prayers. Um, but going forward in, in the weeks ahead, our session has made the decision, uh, instead of going back and forth between outdoor worship one week and Zoom the next, um, we were hoping the, the Zoom would give us a chance to reconnect with some folks that are, are not, uh, you know, cannot be here for uh, in-person worship of any sort. Um, but it hasn't quite worked out the way that we had hoped. Uh, and so the session has decided to do the outdoor worship every Sunday that the weather permits. Um, but also every Sunday we will have uh, a sofa sanctuary uh, available to you if, if you cannot come here. Or if the weather does not permit us to meet, um, we will have a sofa sanctuary available for all um, every week. Uh, this Wednesday is also Ash Wednesday, uh, and so we invite you to come uh, to the church on Ash Wednesday, either between the hours of 12 noon and 1 o'clock, uh, or later uh, at 6, between 6 and 7. Uh, come to the right side as you come into the church and pull through the overhang back by the kitchen, um, where we will uh, place the ashes upon you and say a prayer uh, together and Jake will be here, um, or or someone will be here. If, <laughs> since Jake is unavailable, I should say someone will hopefully be here uh, providing some music for us as well. Uh, and so please come and be a part of that. You will also receive a, a Lenten devotional uh, and a bag uh, for your yourself or your family uh, together, one one per family uh, that Karen has put together with some help. Uh, from Melanie um, that is called Lent in a Bag. Uh, and there are things in there that are thought-provoking about what the season of Lent means uh, as we prepare ourselves for those events of Holy Week and, and, and you know, from Palm Sunday to Easter and, and everything that happens that week. But throughout this whole season of Lent, what does that mean as we examine ourselves and, and what it means to be uh, disciples of Christ and, and how that is going for us uh, and how we may grow uh, in our discipleship. Uh, these are all uh, wonderful little tools. Uh, Karen is also putting together uh, not a Stations of the Cross, but sort of a Stations of Discipleship uh, on our campus here at the church. And uh, as soon as she has that up and running, um, we will put the word out and we invite you to come uh, at any time. Uh, during the day, on, on any day, and avail yourself of that, and, and we think that you will find that um, to be helpful uh, and stimulating to your faith as well, uh, a good reflective time uh, as, you, as you think about what it means to be a disciple uh, as, as we follow uh, the path of Jesus' own disciples in the Gospels. So today, uh, let us gather together on this last Sunday before the season of Lent begins, uh, and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the words of Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. But happy are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. 
Praise the Lord. Let us worship the Lord together this day. As we approach our scripture reading for today, let us pray together. God of abundant life, your grace is our daily bread, and your love is for all people. Nourish us by your word this day and fill us with your spirit, 
so that we may grow in our faith and grow in our love for you and grow in our love for our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the second chapter, verses 13 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fayette Presbyterian Disciples and Followers of Jesus Placement Agency, this is Karen. How can I help you? Oh, well, hello. I wasn't expecting to hear from you so soon. How have you been? Yes, yes. Well, how are those new guys working out? Everything going okay with Peter and Andrew? Yes, good, good. And what about James and John? Excellent. I know they're such good men, honest and fair, respected, loved by their families. I know, I know. Well, that was very clever how you picked those real life fishermen to be fishers of men. That was a good one. You're looking for some new folks to help with your ministry. Oh, that is wonderful. Let me tell you about a few of our newest candidates. Now, let's see. There is Bobby. Now, Bobby, oh, Bobby has been a follower of yours for some time. Yes, he has already memorized those Ten Commandments. Yes, yes. He has started a community garden to help with the less fortunate. He even works with our children's group. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just put that one to the side. Now, what about Jerry? Now, Jerry is an awesome guy, and he is loved by those Pharisees. He would be a great choice, too. Mm -hmm. Real salt of the earth, that Jerry. Oh, oh, I see. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't, I don't remember that name, but let me just look through my files. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh, here it is right here. Levi. Levi. Levi? Levi, the tax collector? Not so great guy. Dishonest. Hated. Uh, um, Jesus, I'm not so sure that this Levi is the right guy for you. You know, we're really looking for the best of the best to be your followers. And besides, you know, what would those Pharisees say if you chose a hated tax collector to be your new guy? What's that? Oh, hang on. Let me just, let me just write that down. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. That's a good point, Jesus. I will send this Levi over soon. Okay. Have a good day. God bless you too. Bye. Hmm. You know, today's scripture and the story about how Jesus calls Levi, the hated tax collector, to be his follower, those things are important for us to remember because they remind us all that all people are invited and called and welcomed to be part of the kingdom of God. Not just the people who are good and respected, 
those who act the right way, dress the right way, say all the right things, and think just like I do. Not just the people who are just like me, but everyone. Everyone needs and deserves God's love. And that's what we can remember from today's story, friends. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus and his welcoming love. Help us to live like Jesus, to be welcoming, and to invite all we need into the kingdom of your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Today is the last in this series about belonging in terms of faith. We began by remembering Jesus' baptism. And those words that said, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. But we also remembered our own baptisms, that we belong to God. And in baptism also belong to the community of faith that forms around the risen Christ. The next week, we remember the story of God calling to Samuel in the night and how belonging brings us into a close connection with God who knows us by name, something that reminds us of Jesus' own saying that his sheep know the shepherd's voice. The third week, we read about Jesus calling the disciples and thought about how we belong not just to a vague idea of Christianity, but to the Lord Jesus and to the community that he calls to follow him and learn his ways. The fourth week, we remembered Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, addressing conflicts that they had with each other within their community to which they belonged. And we talked about how it is not always easy to belong to this community, but we are called in Christ to resolve our differences in love and live out our calling to be the body of Christ together in the world. And last week, we read the story of Jesus going to Simon's house, where the disciples may have thought they would enjoy some time alone with Jesus as sort of his inner circle. But we find out that Jesus' notion of belonging is not restrictive, but it is instead expansive as their attention is drawn first to Simon Peter's sick mother-in-law, and, and then to the needs of the whole town, and then to the people of other towns, where Jesus intends to go and share this good news as well. So finally, we arrive today at this story of Jesus calling Levi. We have heard about Jesus calling Peter and Andrew and James and John all guys who live near each other, probably already knew each other. They were even all fishermen and, and worked in the, in the same business. They had a lot in common. That might describe a lot of our own circles of friends or even churches in a lot of ways. But in the next chapter, we hear about Jesus calling someone very different. Levi a tax collector. Belonging to God and to the community of faith obviously will mean being in community with people who are not like us. Imagine who those folks might be. Having someone join us who is a lot younger or a lot older, who is black or who is more liberal or more conservative, or more educated, or less educated, or whatever it may be. I think we like to say that we love to have all sorts of people, but underneath, I think we really welcome them only if they go along with the way that we see things. That's not really diversity, is it? But what does it mean if Christ has called them, this other, to be a part of us. And does it mean that it actually, what does it, it mean that, that it's actually us who are, are being called to change in some way? 
Are we really open to another? So when we belong to this community of faith around Jesus, it means that we will be in community with people who are not like us. But what we do have in common is Christ. The love Christ has for all of us. And the love we are to show each other. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, he tells about Jesus calling Levi the tax collector, um, while other Gospels talk about Jesus calling Matthew the tax collector. We don't hear much more about Levi, but we do hear a little more about Matthew. And so Frederick Beekner once wrote, Matthew the tax collector and Thomas the doubter, Peter the rock and Judas the traitor. Mary Magdalene, and Lazarus' sister Martha, and that old woman, that guy in the pickup truck, they are all our family, and you and I are their family and each other's family because that is what Jesus has called us as the church to be. Our happiness is all mixed up with each other's happiness and our peace with each other's peace our own happiness, our own peace can never be complete until we find some way of sharing it with people who the way things are now have no happiness and no, no peace. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world. Where there are dark places, be the light, especially there. Be the salt of the earth. Bring out the true flavor of what it is to be truly alive. And be truly alive. Be life givers to others. That is what Jesus tells the disciples to be. That is what Jesus tells his church, tells us to be and do. Love each other. Heal the sick, he says. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. That is what loving each other means. If the church is doing things like that, then it is being what Jesus told it to be. If it is not doing things like that, no matter how many other good and useful things it may be doing instead, then it is not being what Jesus told it to be. It's as simple as that. Beekner made another comment about a tax collector, in this case, Zacchaeus, uh, at the end of his little book called Peculiar Treasures. Um, that have little descriptions of all sorts of biblical people, um, but it seems very appropriate for today. And he writes this for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus makes a good one to end the biblical characters with because, in a way, he can stand for the whole cast of biblical characters who precede him. He's a sawed-off little social disaster with a big bank account and a crooked job. Uh, but Jesus welcomes him aboard anyway. And that's why he reminds you of all the others, too. There's Aaron whooping it up with the golden calf the moment his brother turns his back. And there's Jacob conning everybody, including his own father. There's Jael driving a tent peg through the head of an overnight guest. And Rahab, the first of the red-hot mamas. There's Nebuchadnezzar with his taste for roasting the opposition. And Paul holding the lynch mob's coats as they go to work on Stephen. There's Saul, the paranoid, and David, the stud, and those mealy-mouthed friends of Job's who would probably have succeeded in boring him to death if Yahweh hadn't stepped in just the nick of time. And then there are the ones who betrayed the people who loved them best, such as Absalom and even poor old Peter. Like Zacchaeus, they're all of them peculiar as hell, to put it quite literally. And yet, you can't help feeling that, like Zacchaeus, they're all of them somehow treasured too. Why are they treasured? Who knows? But maybe you can say, at least this is about it, that they're treasured less for who they are and for what the world has made them for, what they have in them than what they have in them at their best to be. Because ultimately, of course, it's not the world that made them at all. All the earth is mine, says Yahweh, and all that dwell therein, adds Psalm 24, 
And in the long run, presumably, that goes for you and me too. <laughs> so it's a wonderful depiction um, that Frederick Beekner gives us of all of these peculiar people um, that show up in the scriptures, and yet it is precisely them whom God has called to be a part of his community, to be a sign of his kingdom in the world. And those are the same kinds of folks that Jesus calls to be part of the community, the body of Christ that surrounds him and walks in his way. Some of these folks are going to be very different from me or very different from you, or but isn't it a wonderful thing? that we are not together because we are all the same or all think the same way, but we are together because of the grace of Jesus Christ and his love that has brought us to be brothers and sisters together and to be his body in the world. And that is a wonderful sense of belonging. Amen. Today, as we approach the end of our service together, I wanted to share with you a prayer uh, written uh, a while ago by a person named Francis Grimke. And this is our prayer for today. Please uh, bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Lord, 
Take out of our hearts all bitterness, hatred, and even indifference, unconcern, as it respects others. Help us to feel kindly towards others, to be sincerely interested in their welfare and happiness. The Lord Jesus was interested in everybody, wanted to help everybody, felt kindly toward everybody. There was never any bitterness or hatred or indifference towards those whom he was daily thrown in contact. Love, true love, unselfish love, love that suffereth long and is kind, was ever to the front, was ever actively in evidence. Grant that it may also be true of all of us in all our relations and contact with others. It is his beautiful spirit that we need to catch and carry with us all through life. Amen. Friends, as you go out this week, go knowing that you belong to us, to your sisters and brothers in Christ, to the body of Christ, to this community of faith. You belong to Christ himself to God, to the Spirit. So go this day in our love, and go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And may you be in his peace always. Amen. In this place, Belong. We all have our part to this place we have come with everything we are, and we lift our hearts in one accord, and we sing your praises, Lord, for the things you have done in this place.